Hi and welcome to another WatchGeek video. Today I'll be doing a tutorial for the module 5478 that's inside this GA500 G-Shock, which is a pretty new model. Now I wanted to do the tutorial for this because I find this module to be very interesting and it has a few details that really sets it apart from other G-Shocks, or should I say it makes it very useful. But before we move on, I just wanted to thank Silvertime Watchtower for supplying this watch and if you want to check them out, you can click on the link in the description. Also in the description, just like usual with my tutorial videos, you will find a table of contents with different functions of the watch. So if you want to jump to a certain function of the watch or part of the video, you don't have to watch the whole thing, you can just click on that time code in the description. However, I would advise you to watch the whole video for the first time, just so you get acquainted with the basic functions of the watch and all the options it offers. Just like with all other analog digital G-Shocks, the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to check and correct the hand's position because this is something that you will have to do every time when you change the battery because when you change the battery the watch resets to midnight so if the hands are pointing anywhere other than midnight they're going to be showing incorrect time once you set up the time correctly so to check and to correct the hand's position you have to be in the home screen and then while in the home screen you press and hold this adjust button for more than five seconds so you have to ignore the first beep that takes you to the adjusting screen and wait for two more seconds until the watch goes into the hand setting mode so let's do it press and hold keep holding and there now you're in the hand setting mode now the first hand that you have to check and set is this subdial hand and as you can see it says that it should sh it should uh, show to zero which this one does now to correct it if it wasn't showing zero if it was showing anywhere else you can move it with these two buttons like so now i don't know if you can see but the hand is slowly moving away now we're just going to return it back to zero so this hand is now okay Pressing the mode button is going to take you to the setting of the minute and hour hand. Now they should point to midnight, which is why this has displayed zero hours, zero minutes. So if they stop at midnight like this, the watch is set up correctly. If they show anywhere else, you need to correct them. To correct them, you again use these two buttons. So you can go in increments in, uh, in one, one movement increments or it can speed scroll by pressing and holding a button and you stop it by pressing the same button. So let's go backwards, you press and hold and to stop it, you press it again. Now let's just correct it. And let's say you set up everything correctly. So this is how the hands should look when they're set up correctly. These one has to have to show to midnights and this one has to show to zero. Once you've set up the hands and everything is okay, you press the adjust button again and the watch is gonna resume operation. Now you're ready to set up the time, the dates, and other functions. Okay, so to adjust the time, the dates, and all the other data, while in the home screen, you press and hold the adjust button for three seconds. So press and hold, and release. And if you just noticed, the hands just moved away from the digital screen, so they're not in the way, which is a pretty cool function. Now the first thing that the watch is going to ask you is your home city or home time zone. And this is important to set up correctly because the world time function is based off of this. So if you mess this thing up, the world time function is not going to show correct times. Now to change the time zone, you use these two buttons. So you can go west and you can go east. Or you can also speed scroll if you press and hold. So let's go back to Paris because this is my time zone or Berlin. Let's say Berlin. Now, uh, to go through to different to other values, you press the mode button. So you press the mode button, and now the watch is going to ask you for the DST setting, or daylight savings time, or summertime. If it's winter and the daylight savings time is not observed, or if you live in a time zone where you don't observe the, the daylight savings time, you can toggle it with this to off. Or if it's observed or it's summer, you toggle it to on, and the hours are going to move by one up according to the daylight savings time. Let's just put it to off because currently it is winter. Pressing the mode button again is going to ask you whether you want a 12 or 12, uh, 24 hour uh, display selection. So like this, it's going to be the AM PM. If we press it like this, it's going to be the military time. Since I prefer this display, I'm going to leave it like this. Pressing the mode button again 
takes you to the seconds. Now, if you reset the seconds now up between 30 and 59, the seconds are going to go to zero, but the minutes are going to move by one up. So if we reset it now, as you can see, the seconds went to zero, but the minutes went to 19. However, if you reset the seconds up to up to 30 seconds, so from 1 to 29, the seconds are going to reset, but the minutes are going to stay, uh, stay unchanged. So if we reset it now, as you can see, the seconds went to zero, but the minutes stayed the same. Pressing the mode button again takes you to the hours. Now to change the hours, you again use these two buttons and you can go up, you can go down and you can also speed scroll. And this is pretty much the same for minutes, hours, dates, for pretty much anything. So press the mode button again, is gonna take you to the minutes. So now again, as you can see, you can change it by pressing this button. You can go up, you can go down. Pressing the mode button again takes you to the year. So again, up, down. Pressing uh, the mode button again takes you to the month. So again, up, down, and the date up, down. The day of the week is calculated automatically so you don't have to set it up at all. Pressing the mode button again, the watch is going to ask you about the key tone. So if you have this display right here, the watch is going to make sound when you operate the buttons. Where You can toggle it with this lower button to mute. Now the watch is not going to make any sound when you operate the buttons. So let's leave it at key tone. Pressing the mode button again asks you for the light duration. So if you leave it like this, the backlight is going to be on for one and a half seconds. If you toggle it to three by pressing this button right here, it's going to be on for three seconds. So let's leave it like this. And pressing the mode button again cycles you back to the beginning, the selection of the time zone. So if you want to change anything else or if you messed up something when you were setting it up, you can just cycle with the bone button until you come to the part that you want to change again. Once you've set up the, the whole adjusting, you just press the adjust button again and the watch is going to resume operation. And now the hands are going to move to the correct time. Now while in the home screen, pressing this button right here is going to activate the light. And it's going to be on for 3 seconds before because we just set it up for 3 seconds. Pressing this button right here is going to cycle what the is going to toggle between what this digital display displays. Now, as you can see, now it displays the seconds, the hours, and the minutes. Pressing it again is going to return to the calendar display. So now it displays the day of the week, the month, and the date. Pressing the adjust button is going to show you what time zone you're currently set up for as the home time. Briefly, and then it's going to resume its operation, as you can see. So it just wrote Berlin. And then after that, it just went back to displaying the day of the week. So it's a pretty cool feature to know how you set up your watch. Pressing this button right here is where it becomes a bit weird or unusual to Casio watches because in 99% of Casio watches, if you have this button right here, it means that it's a light button. But as you just saw, this was the light button. So this is not a light button. This is actually a direct access to stopwatch button. So if you want to time something, you don't have to go into the stopwatch by using this mode button, but you can just press it and the watch is going to enter the stopwatch and start measuring the time, which is a pretty cool feature. So let's stop it, reset it and go back to home time home screen. Now pressing the mode button is going to cycle you through different modes. Also, no matter what mode you're in, pressing and holding the mode button for more than two seconds is going to take you back to the home screen. And if you notice, this little hand right here displays what function you're currently in. So as you move through the functions, this hand is going to move accordingly. Okay, so the next function by pressing the mode button is the countdown timer and this watch has a 60 minute countdown timer and the countdown timer can be started it can be stopped it can be reset once it reaches zero it's gonna start beeping you can also set it up to any uh, any time between one minute and 60 minutes in one minute increments to do so you press and hold the adjust button and the watch is going to ask you what minute you want to set it up for now you do it with these two buttons and please note that this our graph here is going to show you how much time you have remaining. So if we set up, let's say, to 10 minutes, you're going to see that 
this black part is where your time ran out and this is how much time you have left. If we set it up for, I don't know, uh, 20 minutes, as you can see, the black, the black part is moving away to the 20 minute mark. And now let's say we set it up for 20 minutes. If we exit the adjusting mode and we start the timer, this black part is going to start shrinking as your time is running out which is pretty cool. And now as you can see, the 19th minute is blinking. When it, once, once it reaches 18, the 19 is gonna stop blinking, it's gonna remain black, and the 18 one is gonna start blinking. So a pretty cool graphic feature to show you how much time you have left. Now let's just stop it and reset it. The next function is the world time function. And this watch has one of the best world time functions of any Casio. Unfortunately, you can only go due east, you can go due west, which is the only bad thing about this function. So while in the world time function, the hands are gonna keep showing your home time, while the digital display is gonna show you which time zone you're currently observing and what the time is for that time zone. So like I said, with this button, you can go due east. And as you can see, the times are going to change accordingly. Pressing this button is just going to activate the light, so you can't go back. However, if you miss your desired time zone, you don't have to go all around the globe because pressing these two simultaneously is going to jump back to the UTC, as you can see. So now you can continue going back to, to the desired time zone. So let's select, I don't know, Moscow or something like that. Let's say Moscow because you want to travel there. And this is where the cool part of this watch comes comes in and that is the time swap function. So let's say you want to travel to Moscow from Berlin. So this is now currently Berlin time with the hands and Moscow time on the digital display. So once you land in Moscow, it's going to be a bit difficult checking the time on this small digital display. So you want to have the Moscow time shown with the hands but you still want to keep track of your home time by having it on this digital display. Now to do so, all you have to do is press this button for more than two seconds. So press and hold. And there, you've, you've just finished. So as you can see now, the Berlin time has moved to the digital screen while the hands are just being adjusted to the Moscow time. So a pretty handy feature for people that travel a lot between different time zones. So let's say you travel back to your home time. So you travel back to Berlin. All you have to do once you land is press and hold this button again. And the time zones are going to go back to the old where this is going to be the Berlin time and Moscow is going to be displayed in this screen. So it's a really, really well executed and well thought out world time function because it doesn't require any syncing or, or manually changing the time zone, nothing. Just one press of a button and you've swapped your time zones. Another thing that you can do while in the world time function is turn the DST for each time zone individually. So let's say in the Moscow, if it's currently uh, daylight savings time, meaning summertime to turn it on, you just press and hold the adjust button and the DST is gonna be turned on, and as you can see, the time change accordingly. If you wanna turn off the DST, you again press and hold the, G the adjust button, and the DST just turned off. And that's pretty much it. The next function is the alarm function. Now this watch has five alarms with one being a snooze. To cycle through the alarms, you press this lower button. So you can, as you can see, it says alarm two, alarm three, and the status of that alarm, and the time that it's been set up for. So alarm four, the SNZ is the snooze alarm, and the SIG is the hourly chime. Now to turn on any of these, you just go to the selected uh, alarm that you wanna turn on, and you press this lower button. So as you can see now it's on, and this little display says ALM. If you select the snooze alarm and turn that on, the display is gonna display the SNZ and the ALM. And if you select the hourly chime and turn that on, it's going to display the SIG, which, is the hour, which means that the watch is going to beep every full hour. Now let's just turn that off and turn the alarm we had on off and the snooze. Naturally, uh, you can set up each one of these alarms to the desired time and you do it just like with the countdown timer and just like w when setting up the time. So press and hold the adjust button. And there, the watch is going to ask you for the hours, 
and it's going to ask you for the minutes. To set up the hours, you use these two buttons. You can go up and, up and down. Once you've set up the hours, you press the mode button. It's going to ask you for the minutes. Again, you can go up or down. And that's pretty much it. And please note that even though the snooze alarm was turned off, as soon as you start adjust, uh, adjusting the alarms, it's going to automatically turn itself on. Now to finish the adjusting of the alarm, you press the adjust button again. And now this alarm has been set up for 2, for 2 a.m. Now all the alarms are going to be beeping for about 10 to 15 seconds and then they're going to turn themselves off. Or if you press any of the buttons, they're going to stop beeping. However, the snooze alarm that we just turned on, even after it stops beeping, in about 5 minutes it's going to repeat itself and then another 5 minutes and another until you go into the alarm functions into the alarm function like this and turn it off by pressing this button. So now you're going to stop the snooze alarm. And the last function that this watch has is a 24 hour stopwatch. It also measures down to 1 one hundredth of a second, has a direct access that I showed you at the beginning of the video, and also has something called a target alarm, where you can set up the desired time where you want the watch to warn you that you've reached your goal, but the stopwatch will continue measuring even beyond that. Now, to start the stopwatch, you use this lower button. So you can start it, you can stop it, and you can reset it with the search button. You can also do the split times, meaning you can start it. Pressing this button is going to freeze the screen. And while the stopwatch keeps running in the background, to unfreeze the screen, you press this button again. And you can do the first and second place, meaning if you have two runners, when the first one goes through the finish line, you press this button. When the second one goes through the finish line, you press the lower button. And now you, you write down the time of the first runner. Pressing this button is going to display the time of the second runner. And pressing it again is going to reset the stopwatch. Now, the thing that I love about the stopwatch is that everything is displayed in a single line. So you have the hours, the minutes, the seconds, and the hundreds of the seconds, which is pretty rare to see in Casio watches. Now, like I said, the final thing that the stopwatch has is something called the target alarm. So to set up the target alarm or the desired time where you want the watch to warn you that you've just reached uh, your target, you press and hold the adjust button. And it's going to ask you what the hours and the minutes you want the target set for. You can move it up and down with these two buttons. And pressing the mode button is going to ask you for the minutes. Now you can set up again to the desired time. So let's say we put the target to one minute. Or let's say to three minutes. Because we want a, a certain interval training to be three minutes. Now the pressing the mode button again is going to ask you whether you really want the target turned on or off. And this is pretty useful because you want to have, let's say, set up the target of three minutes, but you don't want to use it all the time as a target as a target stopwatch. Sometimes you just want to use it as a regular stopwatch and use the target function only when you're working out. So by doing uh, toggling this off, you can use the watch as a regular stopwatch. Toggling it on, you just turned it on, but you don't have to set up the time each time when you want to use the target. So if we leave it like this and press the adjust button, we are going to have the target uh, target alarm turned on. And to check what the target was set up for, you just press the adjust button. And the watch is going to tell you that the target is three minutes. So now, if I start the, uh, start, start the stopwatch, once the watch reaches three minutes, it's going to start beeping, telling us that we reached our target, but it's still going to continue measuring uh, with the stopwatch until we actually stop it. So this is a pretty useful function for someone into sports. Again, we can stop it. We can reset it, and that's pretty much it. Pressing the mode button again takes us back to the home screen. Well, this pretty much completes the whole tutorial of this watch, so I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe by pressing this button right here, and until the next video, bye.